The subject of my research is a musician by the name of Charles Henry Galloway, who was one of the most prolific performers and teachers of organ in the St. Louis area during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In spite of his many contributions to the musical culture of St. Louis, however, Charles Galloway has been all but forgotten. With this project, I set out to shed light on this neglected musician that he might earn the recognition he deserves. The primary purpose of this research thus far has been to uncover the historical documents related to Galloway's life and make them easily accessible for other scholars. But before I get into my methodology, I'd like to give some biographical information for you to better understand why I believe my work to be so necessary. Charles Henry Galloway was a St. Louis church and concert organist, choral conductor, educator, and composer. At six feet eight inches tall, Galloway was a large man with a commanding presence. His hands were so large, in fact, that his reach on the piano was supposedly 12 keys, or just over 11 inches. Galloway's musical training began at a very young age. One of his earliest instructors was William Robin, who Gerald Boardman refers to as one of the most distinguished pioneers of serious music in the American West. A child prodigy, Galloway was employed as a church organist by the age of nine, though some accounts claim he was as young as seven. Regardless, he was known as the boy organist for many years due to his young age. Over the course of Galloway's life, he was employed at numerous churches throughout St. Louis, including St. Peter's Episcopal Church, where he played on his first pipe organ and served as organist and choir master for more than 35 years. Galloway first met Alexander Guimont, widely regarded as the greatest organist in the world at that time, in September 1893, when the French virtuoso was touring North America. Two years later, Galloway departed for France, where he spent nearly four years studying organ and theory with Guimont in Paris. He was reportedly the only student Guimont ever asked to perform with him in concert at the Trocadero, where he played for audiences of four to five thousand. Guimont later dedicated his seventh organ sonata to Galloway. As a performer, Galloway's greatest recognition came from serving as the official organist of the 1904 Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis, when he was just 32 years old. There, he debuted the great organ in Festival Hall, now preserved as the nucleus of the Wanamaker organ in Philadelphia. The World's Fair Bureau of Music commissioned the Murray M. M. Harris Organ Company to construct the largest organ ever built, the sheer size of which was truly unprecedented. Its console had five manuals, each with 61 keys, 140 stops, and more than 10,000 pipes, the lowest of which were 32 feet long and, as World's Fair Secretary David R. Francis notes, large enough for a pony to pass through them. In his official history of the fair, John Wesley Hansen writes, quote, it's an instrument capable of producing 17,179,869,183 distinct tonal effects, a continuous performance that would last 32,600 years if a different one of these combinations were drawn every minute. Outside of his career as a performer, Galloway was quite involved with various St. Louis musicians and organizations. When Governor Herbert S. Hadley established the Missouri State Song Committee in 1910, Chairman W.H. Palmer, founding dean of the University of Missouri School of Music, quickly selected Galloway as one of its six members. A year earlier, Galloway, along with Ernest R. Kroger and James T. Quarles, chartered the St. Louis chapter of the American Guild of Organists. Over the course of his career, Galloway also conducted numerous choral ensembles. He was hired as the conductor of the Apollo Club of St. Louis, the city's premier's Mend Chorus, in 1902, and a few years later, the Morning Choral Club, the premier women's chorus. In addition, he served as the conductor of the Washington University Chapel Choir for various years beginning in 1910. He was, in fact, conducting the ensemble when the St. Louis, with the St. Louis Symphony in 1931 when, as his obituary notes, he was suddenly stricken with an attack of heart disease to which he succumbed within an hour. Unsurprisingly, Galloway's reputation as an organist put him in high demand as an instructor. Over the course of his teaching career, he gave keyboard lessons to a, no to a great number of students. In addition to those in his private studio, Galloway taught at various institutions, including the Strasburger Conservatories of Music for nearly 35 years and briefly Lindenwood College. Like Galloway, many of his students pursued careers as both educators and church organists. Students like James T. Quarles, Mamie Erickson Dufford, and Henry Sterry Walser taught at institutions not just in Missouri, but across the Midwest, and they continued to serve as church organists throughout their lives. At the beginning of this project, I set out to essentially rediscover Charles Galloway and his, his importance as a musician, which I intended to do by locating all documents related to him and assembling them in an online database devoted to Galloway and his work, a corpus of primary source materials, 
concert programs and announcements, advertisements, correspondence, public records, you name it. Now, when I first started my research, I knew these documents existed, but whether there were five, 10, 100, I had no idea. What I found was beyond anything I could have expected. Over the past year and a half, I've digitized and archived a little over a thousand documents on the website I created. Of course, not all of those are preservation quality by any means, but that was never the purpose of this project. The large majority of these documents already existed in special collections or church repositories, so preservation isn't an issue. Accessibility, however, is, as the documents are located at numerous institutions and, in most cases, largely uncatalogued. The Galloway Archive Project is intended to compile and organize all of these documents in one centralized hub in order to make them easily accessible and usable by other researchers or anyone with a general interest. So now I'd like to give you a tour of my website so you can see how I've achieved this and I'll kind of highlight some of its primary features. The website domain is chgallowayorganist.com uh, and obviously I won't have time to give you a full tour of the site today so if you're interested I would recommend that you go check it out. Again, it's chgallowayorganist.com. Here on the home page, we have quick links to various parts of the site, including Galloway's complete biography, uh, some topics of interest, and down here at the bottom of the page, we have the site logo and share links for various social media platforms. Uh, if you really love the site, I ask that you please, please share it. At the top of the page, you can see the site menu, which is broken down into the About section, which contains some information about the site, as well as general biographical stuff and correspondence as well. And then there's the different elements of Galloway's career, so performer, conductor, educator, and writer, which includes both his compositions and his published articles. And finally, a search function. If you click on one of the menu items, it will take you to the page that shows the main highlights of that section. Conductor, for example, contains links that will take you to the pages for the Morning Choral Club, the Apollo Club, and the Chapel Choir. So like I said before, the main purpose of this project is accessibility, and a big part of that is having a simple yet intuitive navigation system that makes it easy for users to locate documents. Let's say you were interested in Galloway's time at St. Peter's Episcopal and you wanted to know if there were any financial records. You could go to Performer, select St. Peter's Episcopal Church, Church Documents, and right there are a number of vestry reports. Or say you wanted to play one of Galloway's compositions. You could go to Writer, Compositions, and there you go. The download links are right there on the side. And as you can see, this is kind of the general format for the archived materials, although most of the other pages are organized with the date as the title. Uh, but they all have an image uh, title, brief description, reference number, and a download li link to access them. To quickly highlight a couple of my favorite parts of the site, uh, under Educator, Students contains an incomplete list of Galloway's private students, and it shows some of the most notable ones, like J.T. Quarles, Mamie Erickson Dufford, uh, Adolf Steudermann and Leo C. Miller. Under About, Personal Documents, you'll find Galloway's correspondence uh, with various persons and some notable musicians. And finally, if you go to About Images, there are numerous photos and drawings of Galloway and his family, as well as some interesting artifacts like his signature and his headstone. So to conclude, we may never fully understand the extent of Galloway's impact on the musical culture of St. Louis. It can be said with certainty, however, that his contributions to the church music of St. Louis and much of the Midwest have been significant and lasting. Although Galloway received a great deal of admiration during his life, both he and his work truly have been all but forgotten since then. It's my hope that the archive I've created will be utilized to its fullest extent, that it will increase recognition of this musical genius, and that it will lead to further academic study on Galloway and his work. In an article published in Kunkel's Musical Review, Galloway describes his teacher, Guimont, courteous, dignified, modest, serious, and devoid of all eccentricities, quite normal. Alexander Guimont was indeed an ornament to his profession. He was an ambassador of light. Though we would probably never admit it, Galloway's other writings suggest that he possessed many of the same qualities he attributed to Guimont. He was a serious, plain-spoken man with strong convictions. Galloway also had a great deal of reverence for his profession, however, and there's little doubt that he instilled in his students the same beliefs Guimont had instilled in him so many years earlier. Acting as their ambassador of light, that they might do the same for their students and continue to influence future generations of church organists. And this is why I believe my work with the Galloway Archive Project, the acknowledgement of Galloway's significance, and the continued study of his work to be absolutely critical. Thank you.